and welcome to Every Woman and this special edition from London. I'm Shuli Ghosh. On the program this week, In the Red, Why Women Are So Bad at Handling Debt, The Magic of Money, the designer putting British Asian fashion on the map, and the voice of the Muslim youth, the hip-hop band with a difference. Here in the West, we have a very consumer-led society. We're encouraged to buy things, and if we can't afford it, we borrow the money. But it's an attitude which is having a devastating effect on women's financial stability. A recent survey here in the UK shows a huge debt problem among women. Apparently, eight in ten of us are spending more than we earn. And half the women questioned in a poll owe nearly $8,000 on their credit cards. So why are women struggling? Well, I'm joined by financial journalist Liz Barkley to explain the problems. Uh, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, first of all, why are women so bad at, at handling money? I don't think we can say that women are so bad at handling money, but men tend to borrow more, but are able to repay it. Women borrow a bit less, as you said, around about the $8,000 mark. That's around about £3,800. Men probably at the same, over the same period of time have borrowed about £5,000. But men can repay it. It's just that women have more difficulty repaying it. Uh, they have more difficulty because they tend to be lone parents, perhaps, because when a relationship breaks down, children more often stay with women, and that has a more negative financial effect on women than it does on men. Women tend not to have the same kind of careers as men where they progress up the pole up the, that's the and slippery they often pole. take a break they don't often they, take a break either to care for the children. children bring up the children or perhaps to care for parents and so if they've taken a break they then come back to their careers at the level at which they went out and they haven't kept financially in pace with male me male members of society but don't forget that right at the beginning there is a pay gap by the age of 25 men are already making about 15 percent more than women the same age. And that, that's despite and the anti-discrimination laws despite the and equality equal pay laws, laws that we've yes. been trying to fight for for about 30 years, yes. Uh, you mentioned that some women, uh, some groups are more prone to debt than others. Um, I was interested to, to hear that black and Asian women uh, are also in a group which are more prone to being in debt. Why is that? Black and mixed race women are more likely to be in debt than white women. Black and mixed race women and white women are more likely to be in debt than Asian women. But again, it comes back to the fact that black and mixed race women are quite often more likely to be lone parents. They probably work part time and they work in probably fairly low paid jobs. How much can we put the blame on society for being a consumer led society, for encouraging people uh, to have things and if they can't have them, they have to borrow to get them? Credit is a good thing if you manage it properly. It, it does allow you to smooth out the ups and downs in your income. It allows you to but pay for something that's essential. So much. It, it, allows, it allows you to pay for things that you, when you really need them. So we, we need to learn to manage it properly. But what happens is that the, cul the culture has changed. We see ourselves as a plastic society. We, we see ourselves as a society that can have what it wants when it wants it, rather than one that has to save up in order to pay for uh, the essentials as they come along. So yes, we've, I think culturally, We've got a totally different attitude to money, certainly than our grandparents did, but also partly than our parents did. And so we are more likely to say, we want it now. But there's a lot of peer pressure on us to do that. The, big, the banks put pressure on us to take out cards. 55% of the cards that exist in Western Europe exist in the UK. Adults in the UK have on average three and a half credit cards each. That's amazing. So you can see that we do spend a lot on plastic. And that very fact that it's plastic that we're using as opposed to real cash well, means that we've removed ourselves from the concept of real cash. Well, there are solutions out there. In two British cities, Luton and Liverpool, women caught in the poverty trap came up with an innovative idea. They've set up their own banks. Banks run and controlled by them. The results have changed their lives, as every woman reports. It's a pound to join, and then whatever you want to pay. So say you want to pay five pounds a week. After ten weeks, you'd have fifty pounds in your savings. You can apply to buy a hundred pounds. For several years, these women have been running their own community bank or credit union. 
Its aim is to help local women and families get out of financial difficulties. Tracy Fife was one of the earliest members. She joined the community bank when she found herself in financial straits. Tracy speaking. I went from being a half full person to someone who wanted to hang from a noose at the top of our stairs because I just couldn't cope and you don't know which way to turn. Tracy used the credit union to get herself out of debt and now she works there, helping other members of the community to serve together. Being in debt is like being at the bottom of Niagara Falls without any armbands trying to do the breaststroke up. There is nothing worse. You can't blink, you can't breathe. Every second of every day, you're weighed down with this depression thinking, how oh, am I going to buy the tea? How oh, am I going to pay my mortgage? How oh, am I going to pay for my car? How oh, am I going to pay for the lecky and the gas? You just bog down constantly from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to sleep. I'm telling you, you're all right. What their credit union offers and why it is becoming ever more popular is an alternative. Borrowing money from people they know rather than banks or worse, unscrupulous money lenders. We haven't got the manpower to go and knock on someone's door at 10 o'clock when they get their family allowance every Tuesday or Wednesday. And the, but the, the, the money lenders will, they know exactly when people in deprived and impoverished areas get their money. And if you've got a child crying around your legs and you can't get out and he needs a pair of shoes, you're going to take that £50 off them and pay £150 back for it. If you take £50 off your credit union, you won't even pay £2 back for that. Tracy works with Karen Bennett, manager of Enterprise Credit Union. So the same, like we're doing that with the loans, they're all coming in by the end of October. The typical credit union member, I feel, is, is are women aged between the age of 35 and 50. You know, and so now that they join the credit union, you can see the difference in the lives of those women. You know, they do have benefit paid in, they, they come here for loans and they use it for the savings and loan facility. Karen and Tracy's work is deeply integrated in the local community. Sharon Edwards is the landlady of the local pub, the Queen's Arms. She is also a member of the credit union and knows Karen and Tracy well. Um, I've been a member of the credit union now for eight years. Um, of which helps me financially for holidays, uh, household equipment, and it's to me I class as an emergency fund. Yeah. You're not a double. You're oh, do you want a double? Oh, yeah. You're not a double. A few months ago, my washing machine broke, so I made a phone call to um, Cadden, who runs the credit union, and said, Cadden, listen, I'm in a bit of a dilemma. My washing machine's broke, you know, six children, um, not a problem. Uh, and the next day, my cheque was there, so. I went and got that and off I went to, to Curry's to get a washing machine. You know, gale power. <laughs> As the bank is run by local people, the community feel it is there to protect them rather than exploit them. Twice a week, the credit union also provides its services on a local housing estate. Largely through word of mouth, there are now 300 members from that estate alone. At St Albert's Social Club, it's the uh, it's the over 55s pensioners group. The mostly women, mostly women. There were only two men there today. Joy, you know what we're doing at the minute? We're promoting our Christmas club. Now the Christmas club is like a tom time, and whatever you put in, if it's only 10 pence a week, 20 pence, 30 pence, whatever you've got. We'll save it up for you and you draw it out in December. So you've got the safety of knowing. I put my slummy in every day, every single day, and I've got £300 in mine. And that's all with 10 pences. For them people who've had nothing, to then become a shareholder within a business, it's just, you can see the, like, the jaws are slack. You know, sometimes they just don't believe that they're shareholders. Hello. How are you? Hello. You, that's not like you, is it, love? No. Right, yes. I was looking for you the other week. Mother said trees is over there in Tesco. I didn't see you. From a personal point of view, I'm extremely proud. Um, you don't really. I don't think it's also hits home until you, you know, you do get the thank you card through the post or something like that. You know, and someone will stop you. You know, and we've had people in here who sort of, you know, gone out crying with relief. The women feel the service they give is much more personal than the one people would get from a large bank. And if someone's upset, I'll give them a hug and a kiss. 
just very nice. It's nice to be able to do that. It's like having a blanket on. You just sort of feel cosy. Your blanket and your slippers, just good. That was a, a really innovative solution. What do you think of that, Liz? It's interesting, you know, credit unions came to Ireland in about 1958. They came to the UK in 1964, so we're saying it's innovative, but I think it's just now that they're really taking off. They're opening at around about the rate of one a week, and they're a brilliant idea for people who simply just don't have the income as we saw there. Mo we, we talk about women in debt, but most women don't run up frivolous bills because they just love handbags. <laughs> most women are ha struggling with their money simply because their income because just doesn't so much cover all the essentials. financial pressure on them, isn't there? Huge financial pressure. Now you think about something like Christmas coming up, for instance, and women are usually the ones who want to make sure that the family have the best possible Christmas. They're the ones who've put pressure on themselves all year to try to save aside some money, perhaps for Christmas presents, but for special food at Christmas, for the decorations, whatever it happens to be. But in a situation like the credit union, then obviously they can save small amounts. And if they do need a loan, come a special occasion like that, or come the washing machine breaking down, then the interest rates are really low. So it is a really good solution for a lot of people. Thank you very much indeed, Liz Barclay, talking about women and debt there. Well, coming up after the break, I'll be in East London to meet glittering fashion designer Mani Coley. She's a rising star in the East meets West fashion industry. And who knows, I might get to try on some of her designs. See you in a moment. <laughs>